My dear first year students, we are going into the second uh, poem called as Piping Down the Valley Wild, written by William Blake, Dr. Bula Sir is presenting you the second poem. I was waiting for your essays and question answer to value for eternal assessment, but I have not received any. So I would like to go on to the second poem written by William Blake, Piping Down the Valley Wild. Piping Down the Valley Wild. So, William Blake was an English poet and a painter and a printmaker. Blake lived and worked in teeming metropolis of London at a time of great social and political change that profoundly influenced his writing. Blake's techniques was to produce his text and designed the series for the poem entitled Songs of Innocence, Songs of Experience. So here we see that Piping Down the Valley Wild was written by a poet called as William Blake. William Blake and uh, William Blake, 17, uh, he was born in 28 November, 1757, 12th August, 1827. He was an English poet, a painter, as well as a printmaker. Those days, it was in the beginning of printing. So he was well versed in many other arts like painting and fine arts like painting and printmaking. So he was, as he, as he deduced in the book, Blake lived and worked in a way he worked in teeming metropolis of London at a time of great social and political change that profoundly influenced his writing. Uh, so he was living in a very uh, a time when there was uh, things were changing. Many revolutions, industrial revolutions were taking place. So he was living in London teeming up this. At this time, he wrote these books called as Songs of Innocence and Songs of experience two books uh, the introductory poems to each series display blake's dual image of the poet as both a piper and a band in the introduction to songs of innocence blake's presents the poem poet down the valley is wild piping songs of pleasantly the piping songs are poem of pure pleasant so in the first book songs of innocence he writes this, these poem as introductory poems. So we here see that William Blake, uh, as given here in your PowerPoint, although Blake was considered mad by us, because those days people were suffering from in, uh, industrial revolution and natural uh, uh, romantic uh, living. So they were between these two when uh, Blake was writing these poems. So they thought he was a uh, mad and he, his idiosyncratic views uh, was, he, he held it very high. Uh, but then uh, his, his critics at the, after his uh, recording, after his return, he, uh, after his life, who came after his life, thought that the later critics for his expressiveness and creativity and for the philosophical and mystical undercurrents within his work. So, there were, in his book, we see that many philosophies were there and godliness was there. So this was considered as something high by the poets who came in the later period. His paintings to illustrate his poems and poetry they have been characterized as part of romantic movement and as pre-romantic. So I told you 18th century was a romantic movement period because people from higher thoughts and higher philosophical thoughts and uh, godliness and bringing down epics, they came into this little things called as nature. They thought nature was a romantic part of uh, life and enjoying every little things like daffodils and uh, 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 daffodils and a shepherd and a, uh, and a solitary reaper singing song was romantic rather than writing about higher thoughts of life. So he was pre-romantic. He was considered as a pre-romantic because he also writes lots about nature and its influence on man. And uh, the, his history says that the Bible was an early and profound influence on Blake. Like he was a Christian, Bible was influenced his writing and remained a source of influence 
throughout his inspiration throughout his life so throughout his life uh, like book of innocence and book of uh, uh, experience was much influenced by the bible because um, as we go to the book songs of innocence and of experience both of them were illustrated by his paintings no just writing poem was not his uh, conclusion he also painted what he wanted to write so they were illustrated by his paintings and it uh, he had two books come out and that is songs of innocence and another book songs of experience now what is songs of innocence they are the state of mind of human beings when they were innocent when they didn't know what what they were doing you know so that kind of innocence state of innocence and another one is when they took decision to do things on their own experience that is called as experience so they two are contrary states of human soul for you to understand usually children are supposed to be very innocent childhood that is immediately after birth and growing up up to 3 they the decisions are taken by parents conclusively and here he doesn't make any any conclusion but he he does what his mother or father says because of his innocence to obey them but after experiencing a lot of things he takes decision and he tells his mama and papa okay i want to do this i want to buy this i want to do this that is the state of experience so introducing you to this song of innocence he has written this poem piping down the valley is wide you know what is a valley valley is the deeper part of the land you know it it is called as in english tamil as pallathak and here the piping down now here this shepherd as i have shown in this picture he goes down the valleys wide piping songs of pleasant glee so he was now piping down the valleys like it's nature and it is wild because man has not touched it yet he has not made a garden out of it he has not made any kinds of building architecture on it so it was wild with nature nature growing on its own so he was piping on down the valley and he was piping a song of pleasant glee pleasant means very pleasant for to hear to see or whatever kind all the five senses are happy to hear that that is pleasant glee glee is again happiness so on a cloud i saw a child and he laughing said to me so as a shepherd was running around piping the songs of pleasantness he saw suddenly a child on the cloud here child is again stands for jesus baby jesus or might be for an angel now on a cloud i saw a child and he laughing said to me so i is your william blake or the piper maybe william blake was the piper and he he here is the child looking off from the cloud and he laughing said to me so the child was laughing at his song enjoying his song and then he tells the piper what did he say he say it in the second stanza piping a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer so i pai he said now i am is first commandment first command to the piper is now i want you to pipe a song about a lamb now what is a lamb it is a kid of a sheep or a goat is called a lamb and lamb is supposed to be the innocent being of the uh, sheep or goat now what uh, this lamb here is capitalized is capitalized lamb bell is capitalized so he must mean something about capitalizing the word so what is this lamb stands for the lamb stands for jesus christ in the bible so lamb when john the baptist sees jesus christ he says here is the lamb of god Now, what is this lamb? Of, why is he uh, called as the lamb of God? He is called as the lamb of God because he came to this world to be crucified or sacrificed as a lamb unto God for the sins of others. According to the Bible, when somebody transgresses the law of God, he is supposed to carry the lamb to the synagogue or the temple and sacrifice and. Uh, and the confess his sins on the lamb and the lamb is sacrificed the blood of the lamb is taken the blood of the lamb is taken by the high priest or by the priest into the into the uh, synagogue or temple and offered to god 
So lamb means a sacrificial one, an innocent one, which is sacrificed for the sin of others. So also Jesus Christ came into this world, stayed innocent of sins, and was sacrificed and crucified on the cross, where his last blood was, was shed for the sin of the world. That is what the Bible says. So here the lamb is, like here the lamb is referred to the lamb of God of, of uh, the Bible, which is Jesus Christ. So I part with merry cheer. So when the child asked him, come on, I want you to sing a song, pipe a song about a lamb, immediately, William Blake, I, the poet or the piper, immediately piped the song with Mary. Mary means again, happiness, cheer again. Happiness comes out of cheerfulness. So cheerfulness and merriness together is real, very, very happy. So he sings a song. Come on, you're enjoying my songs. I'm going to pipe my song. And he pipes a song. And piper piped that song again. Another commandment from the child. I want you to pipe this song again. So I piped. He wept to hear. So... He, the piper piped the song and once again when he heard this child heard the song he started to cry wept means cried you know the highest form of happiness is crying you cry out of the joy that you cannot bear in your heart so so i piped he wept to hear so the child enjoyed the piping of the song about a lamp Sec third stanza, he says, drop thy pipe, thy happy pipe, sing thy songs of happy cheer. So I sang the same again, while he wept with joy to hear. Drop thy pipe, thy happy pipe. So second is, come on, I've enjoyed your piping of the song, drop it. Now I want to listen to, it is a happy pipe. So now I want to listen to the songs of that happy cheer you've been singing. You've been singing the song through your pipe, but I need to hear the words of what you're going to say, what you've been making the music about. So he wants him to write the lyrics of the song, sing the song. And no wonder Blim Blake or the poet or the piper, who was very excited seeing the child on the cloud, he sang the song same again. So first sing the song, so he, listening to the music twice, now he sings the song, same again, same song. He did not, uh, because he was singing about the Lamb of God, the same Lamb of God, the sin, the song was about the Lamb of God and he sings the same again. Why he, I told you he refers to the child, wept with joy to hear. So God, the, the child was very happy, very, very happy to listen to the song of the Lamb. And it started to cry because of the joy he heard. Piper, sit thee down. Third commandment. Piper, sit thee down and write in a book that all may read. So he vanished from my sight and I plucked a hollow reed. So Piper, sit thee down and write. Now he says, okay, I enjoyed your lyrics. I enjoyed your music. But that's not enough. Not enough that I only should enjoy or the Piper should enjoy. So he gives him another commandment. Piper, now sit down and write in a book that all may read. Since you know these, you've composed these songs, since you've done all these things, why don't you write it? So everybody might enjoy the music. Everybody might enjoy the song. So he vanished from my sight and I plucked a hollow reed. So he says, Piper, now uh, enjoy. Now sit down and write these songs that you've been singing so many. So the child must have watched him for a long time. So he says, now sit down and write those songs that you've been composing about me or composing about the lamb. So, so all can read. So he vanished from my sight. Vanished, disappeared. So the child disappeared of the third commandment saying, and I plucked a hollow reed. A hollow reed is a plant which is used as a pen by rural pen uh, those days to write, uh, to write. So when he was given the commandment to write, immediately he obeyed, you know, the innocence, some of innocence is obedience. Now he writes this, he takes some hollow reeds and he plucked the hollow reeds. And I made a rural pen, I've given you the picture of rural pen here, and I stained the water clear. So he takes up some ink, he has to make ink now. Those days they did not have anything like today, you can get it. You can get it in any shops. Those days they had to make the ink. 
so william blake got a very clear water and stained stained means colored colored the water clear water so that he can write and i wrote my happy songs so he be, he has been singing the piper has been singing these songs for a very long time maybe the child watched him for a very long time so he told him it's not enough of you singing the song about a lamb or telling me to listen to it but it's very important that every child may joy to hear so this joy that that pleasant glee in your song must be carried out to other people and they should be able to listen to these songs not and the audience are children why he has chosen these audiences as children because it is a state of innocence innocence these those people must understand that this book is about the innocence when man was innocent so here he talks about the rural then and how he wrote the song so coming to the summary uh, here you saw the it is about about a lamb i've given you some reference on it after hearing the music the child asks the shepherd to drop his pipe and sing the word to the song so lyrics after enjoying the lyrics the child tells the shepherd to write it in a book that all may read the songs yes created so he sits down makes a pen from the material tan and begins to write my happy songs every child may happy to hear so uh, if if the child has not commanded the songs should have gone with the piper but since he has commanded him to write the songs of innocence that he has been enjoying in the wild and nature makes a thing very important so what about the lamb we can see those pictures there jesus christ he is the lamb who enjoyed children too the poet sees a child in the sky upon a cloud the child is both an embodiment of innocence is his eng and the inspiration behind poetry as he changes the uh, charges a shepherd to play sing and write three things three commandments play sing and write that the child charges a shepherd to play the song specifically about the lamb i told you the reference and indicates one of the major forces of blacks blake's work i'm sorry the portrayal of jesus as the innocent spotless lamb of christianity ostensibly the intended audience for this collection is also innocent as a poet right every child may joy to hear it's not only children however but also the child like at heart child like at heart there are many adults who are child like in their heart and they can also appreciate his works and there are many many adults many old people who become child at their second stage and they can also enjoy these songs so asking him to i he uses the reed of for a pen and stains the water for the ink connects even the act of creation to nature you know i told you he is free romantic he acts the whole act is in the wild uh, valley as well as in the to the nature so the easy acceptable tools provided by natural world serves to emphasize both the spontane spontaneity of the works that follow and their place as responses to bounty and beauty of nature the subject matter will be happy cheer so what will be the subject for the innocent people happy as well as cheerfulness what the children always like they want to play around they want to sing around they want to dance around they don't want anybody to be bound into things innocence but uh, once they are bound into schools and other things they become experienced kids so here is about the songs of innocence so uh, as a summary the shepherd's progression from piping singing and finally writing is can be compared to poet's own progression from inspiration from to the music and then to the initial composition of the poem then he writes the lyrics musical compositions lyrics and finally the creative act of putting the words on paper the poem wishes that all may read everybody should read so to understand and as a, and in his profession he was a painter and an engraver so he did both to illustrate his points now we'll go to the analysis of the poem so piping down the valleys wild so wild is the last word here and if you're going to say a to it piping of the pleasant glee songs of pleasant glee glee doesn't rhyme with wild so we can mark it b on a cloud i saw a child child is again rhyming with wild so again a 
and he laughing said to me me again glee so here both of them rhyme so b b so a b a b next again lamb a cheer b again does not rhyme with lamb so c here rhymes with cheer so a b c b that's a rhyming scheme here here pipe a cheer b c b a b c b here the poet rewrites it again like a b a b a b c b so uh, the poem consists of five stanzas like a uh, heroic stanza form and the rhyme scheme i has told you one and four follows a b a b 2 3 5 uses a b c d pattern the first and fourth stanzas begin with pipe that's it jaran and the noun form piper juxtaposing the musical nature of the speaker the most musical rhymes of the poem i hope you enjoy the poem if you have doubts you can always ask me through whatsapp i prefer you to submit the essays and question answers as soon as possible thank you